Yeah, so good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Elephants in the Room podcast. We are your awesome twosome, as always. I'm Ron Yangeri, the chief thinker. Radhika Bachu, the super striker. Well in. Yes. And today we're going to have a deep, deep chat about a new term that Radhika will <laughs> talk about. explore <laughs> and delve into. This episode will talk about black tax. Oh, right. What does that mean for the everyday Kenyan, Africans? Is it just a, should it really be called black tax? Is it a problem amongst just Africans or does it happen in the Indian community? Does it happen in the English community? God knows. All we'll right. figure it out. Tons of questions. Lots of questions. Yeah, so that's really timely. So tell me, Ro, how, wh- why are you a victim? What happened? So this is the story, okay? So left my Ruby, like, you know what? I've left on August 7th. I'm going to cast my vote uh, August 9th. Uh, I've chilled with my people. I've done my stuff. And yeah, I'm just I'm just waiting on results to come. Okay. okay. Uh, but then what goes around that the son of Nairobi is, is, is in the village, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And from 6 a.m., I, I was getting delegations, you know? Folks were coming, oh, wow. knocking on the door, just saying hello. Yeah, I was just passing by. I, I was 40 <laughs> kilometers away. I had you here, so I decided to pass by. Wow. You know? And the long and short of it, out of all this, I have forked out a lot of money uh, for, for various undertakings, some I had no clue about, you know? So why did you fork out your money? I mean, all these guys, uh, my relatives, okay? Uh, you some felt folks, emotionally obliged. Yeah. And you know, someone tells me, oh, I've been friends with your mom for ages as well. We used to do this together back in the 80s. Did you call your mom to check? No. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the person is right in front of me. I'm not going to go to the phone and like, hey, mom, do you, do you know this person? You know? Yeah. At the end of the day, I think I've financed uh, a couple of houses, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've paid school fees for a number of kids. Yeah. And healthcare bills as well. You thought yeah. you would leave Nairobi, go de-stress, yes. have a cheap weekend away because Nairobi's become expensive. Right. But instead, going to Shags was way more expensive. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. It's like, it's like I, I took a trip, I don't know, to, to Paris or somewhere. I'm just <laughs> looking at how much I actually ended up paying. Yeah. And I'm back. I'm like, ugh. So I need to understand this. What's going on here, Ads? Yeah, so it's really interesting because so yeah. we know this is known as black tax, right? Not uh-huh. only you suffer from it, but yeah. every Kenyan, whoever has left the village okay. and been successful. So that's not just village meaning coming to Nairobi, even yeah. going to the States, okay. the UK, anywhere abroad. It is almost the obligation. There's an obligation you feel. And that's why I was asking yeah. you, like, why? Why did you do it? Yes. It's because you're emotionally designed as a human to okay. want to help people. Yes. And when you start hearing stories that have play on the strings of your heart, um, you will very likely give money away. Yeah, you mentioned kids. Uh, I'm, I'm done. Like, yeah. okay, okay, what is it? Let's Especially hold school. It. For, for me, it's actually yeah. school fees. Like, okay. if someone's like, please, I can't meet, meet, meet their education, Yeah, I will say, okay, I don't have this money, but I'm going to go into my savings and give it to you. Okay. Because educating someone is the best skill you can give them. All right, all right. So, it's about playing on emotional um, strings. Right. And you know what? As humans, we want to give. But really, how do we manage black tax? You digged into your savings and should anything happen to you in the next three to six months, you don't want to be the guy asking for black tax. Yeah, I don't want to call you Radz. Eh? Yeah, and that can happen. Send me it, some money, Radz. Yeah, yeah and yeah. you know, this thing happens so often yeah. that people forget how to manage their own money and they're just, you know, giving money away and then say something happens, they're like, oh no, I have no money. Um, so yeah. yeah. So you, you've mentioned something interesting, black tax. So I've just decided uh, to use the power of Google. Yes. So I'm on Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, can I read out this definition? Yeah, please do. Uh, this takes me back to school. I've not read out something aloud in a very long time. Uh, black <laughs> tax is a term that originated in South Africa mm-hmm. for money that black or other person of color, yes. as you mentioned, uh, professionals provide to their family every month outside their own living expenses, usually out of obligation. Interesting. All right, that was key what you mentioned. Yeah. It is caused by continued economic imbalance that can be traced back to apartheid. Okay, this is for... Uh, the South African case, but we have all our own causes in, 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 in different countries. It can be described as Ubuntu, 
<laughs> ah. about the incapacitating twist for black professionals. <laughs> All wow. right, that's a definition. But also you'll find that yeah. um, a lot of firstborn children yeah. feel this burden okay. to support their families back home. All right. And the reality is that, you know, our parents work really hard. They give us the education and then you go on and you you join these incredible jobs. Yes. But as a firstborn or a child that comes from very little money, yeah. they're naturally obliged to support the family member back home. Okay. And sometimes it's unfair because the oldest one didn't choose to be born first. Okay. But they yeah, have a lot yeah, of yeah. pressures of making sure their parents are okay. Yes. In our Indian culture actually it's very common the eldest son is meant to live with the parents mm-hmm. and they do a lot of the heavy lifting not financially but just more relationshiply wise. So it right. kind of spreads over different cultures in different ways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But traditionally in the context of black tax it is the first born that bears a lot of the pressure of actually making sure to provide to their uh, provide for their parents in retirement. All right. So the, the first one turns out to be like a re- retirement plan. Literally, I was just yeah. going to say that. So yeah. imagine if you helped your parents understand at a at a young age or if they were taught financial planning when they were working. Yeah. They wouldn't be a burden because they would have money that they saved up for their retirement, okay. which allows you not to pay black tax and you can make better financial decisions preparing for your family in your retirement. Correct. So yes. it's almost like a vicious cycle. So black tax, yay, it's great. You know, you're helping your family members, but there are other ways you can help your family members. And I'll talk about it a little bit more later on. Black tax, the, the way I hear it from you is very pervasive. Uh, many people are encountering this. Uh, whether they're vocalizing like myself or <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're suffering in silence. I think there are many stories here that can actually be shared. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do something very interesting today, Rats. Today we're going to bring in some individuals to really talk about other examples of black tax. I think it's really important to hear and share and then we can figure out how we can work towards managing it. What they're actually doing about either resolving it or handling it better. Or are they just stuck? Could be stuck, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's possible. Yeah. All right. Alrighty. So without much further ado, we'll introduce our first guest ever to the podcast. Welcome. Our first guest ever on the podcast. Yay. You have the opportunity to introduce yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi everyone, my name is Mia Mohoro. That's what I'll say about myself today. <laughs> yeah, just Mia Mohoro. A Kenyan. And today I'm yeah? a Kenyan uh-huh. talking about black tax. Thank you. Thank you for hopping onto the podcast this morning. Mm-hmm. We are discussing about black tax, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that's a terminology that Radhika brought up this morning. I've also been just clued in about mm-hmm. it. Uh, but I've realized it's something that has been part of our lives for, for quite long, yeah. right? Um, so tell me, wh- what is your experience with black tax? Uh, what was the scenario? If you can just give us a background around this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I think from, say, 19. Okay. When I first got my first job. Two years uh, ago. Well, yeah, let's call it two. <laughs> let's right. call it two. Yeah. Um, but you start to notice relatives around you will call you for small things. All right. It starts with, you know, you're my daughter. You know, you're my, I, I raised you. I was there when you were taken to school and all yeah. of this stuff. Yeah. And it actually works on your heart. Yeah. In mm-hmm. the beginning, you're strong. You're like, I mean, I know you, but it's not that deep. Right. But as years progress and, you know, they can see that you're also, like, your life is changing. Hmm? You, mm-hmm. you come from the village. Uh, one time you come with a small car. Yes. After four years, you come back, you have a bigger car. Right. So the expectations keep rising. Okay. And I'd say for me, I think I've seen the height of black tax during the COVID uh, period. Right. Because it moved from, hi, um, could you send me 500 bob? Okay. Because we don't have milk. Right. To... Um, I don't have an income, it's during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you to pay my rent? And they will yeah. come in with a, it's not a lot, um, I just need you to give me 5,000 bob. Okay. But then the 5,000 doesn't stop leaving your pocket. It's now post the pandemic, and now y- I'd say st- you're stuck because you don't know how to tell the person, okay, look, this is my end. Yes. I don't want yeah. to do this anymore. So, yeah. Now, if we could go back to, uh, I'm quite keen to understand. Uh, so there's a first interaction of, yes, there's a challenge in, in, in COVID. Uh, can you help me with this? Uh, then it, it translates mm-hmm. to a bigger amount, right? Mm-hmm. 10x, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, it's 500, it's gone to, to, mm-hmm. to 5,000, Bob. How is, how is the methodology of asking for this? Uh, are they still saying, can I, or 
Too much pesa where where. All right? So is, is it now like a demand or <laughs> You know now <laughs> it's it actually delivered? it's actually yeah. now an expectation. They you actually start to notice at the end of the month they'll almost send you a question mark like wait yeah you didn't send uh-huh what am i going to do what am i going to tell the landlord yes you know so you get to the point where you actually just don't pick up calls anymore and i think it's it is a bad way to handle it i wish i could just because you know they work at your heart yes i wish i could just tell them no but you are unable to say I'm no i'm unable to say no so yes. now i ignore phone calls now they they came to you so there's this entire thing where family i, mm-hmm. I raised your kid mm-hmm. i i helped you say your first words mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. Did you ever reach out say to your mom and say listen there's this situation that's happening uh with person XYZ mm-hmm. uh, please help you know <laughs> <I do. laughs> I actually yeah. did I did and I I, res- I say I reached out to my grandmother and for some reason it seems that the notion in shags yeah. is that you're the the better you like you're you're a good kid because you take care of your family You know mm-hmm. it's like almost like the hallmark of like you're such a wonderful ch- grandchild we're so proud of you. Yeah. No 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 you must you know this is how you know you must take care of your elders because this is how it's done. Yeah. It almost it seems like it's almost your obligation and like you guys were talking about earlier you learn that you're actually their retirement plan. They're like you know but you know such as uh, Nani's son yeah. is in the US even uh-huh. built them a house. Eh? Okay. So do this small 5000. Yeah. It's not like come on. You know you can afford it. Start comparing now. Yeah. Look what he did. Exactly, yeah. 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 In fact you can up this you, you can up this can. amount. Yeah. Yes. So what was the impact of this? So you you now have a new expense line uh, which is black tax. Mm-hmm. So here you are in a situation. Let, let's assume, let's just assume that your income has reduced but you have new expense lines. Yeah. How did you deal with this particular situation? You know what? It's actually yeah. it's actually true. My my salary went down 25% during the pandemic. Oh. Oh. Man. Exactly. Yeah. And so now you have an introduced 5000 bob, 5000 bob. Yeah. Um that seems to be uh, almost like your moral obligation. So you have to learn where to personally cut from your life. You reduce your shopping list in such a way that it accommodates this other person and it's It you know what in the beginning it's okay. Your heart is you know I'm doing well. I'm doing I'm I'm doing a good thing there. You know I would not want to see them sleeping in the street with their kid. Yeah. But after a while it actually becomes a very resentful relationship, yeah. Yes. You start to yeah. feel like this person is just like a burden. Yeah. You know, they're such a burden. So you see a call or a text you just don't even want to Oh my god, you know you just you ignore the call. Yeah. They'll call you again, you ignore it. By the time they're calling the fifth time, yeah. now you're picking up with a listen, I've sent. Okay? I've sent. Now you're annoyed. <laughs> okay, I've sent. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually no so you are sort of angry. Yeah. It's creeping into mental health, you know. It really is, yeah. yeah. And you and you've gotten to the po- point where you want to tell them I can't do this anymore. Yes. But then because you know them and you know their state, then uh-huh. you actually feel like if I say no, am I trying to say I want you to sleep in the street? Okay, yes. So emotional emotional strings here. Pulled. You know what? I yes. think this one is almost like a like a, a full therapy session. This should be a therapy session for a lot of people who need to learn to say and and also learn to set boundaries with their relatives and say I this is where I'm drawing the line. I financial don't therapy. Yes. Financial therapy. Yeah. So how's the situation now? How, how is it? Um now yeah. we're two months in to not doing it. I still feel a lot of guilt here. Yeah? Okay. Okay. <laughs> um but I'm learning to to I'm telling myself I did what I could. Yes. Yeah. I did what I could. Unfortunately, it's on somebody else now. <laughs> <laughs> I know this person hasn't gotten a job, so and unfortunately the other person is my sister, so Oh, it's rotated within it the family. Unfortunately, yeah. it has. So, you're two months in mm-hmm. said okay, now I I can do this. Yeah. Uh and the body has shifted to your sister, mm-hmm. all right? I'm mm-hmm. curious about two things. Yeah, yeah. One, What's your sister's take on this? Because I'm sure you two are discussing, you you are ranting like ah this thing is happening. Yeah. Uh does she feel like you kicked the ball to her and she also looking at you funny or She probably is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um so I gave this person a six month uh, ultimatum. I said, you know what, in the next six months I'm not going to do this anymore. Right. Um six months f- end and they're like, okay, I know you said six months, but I still don't have. Yes. Um and so my sister um in her kindness said you know what because mm-hmm. I know they're still struggling I'm going to do two more months for two three more months for them. Okay. So I th- I am I am very cautiously reminding her yes. next month is a hard stop. 
Yes. Because you'll be doing this for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Like take it from me. Take Ta- it from your learn sister. Learn from me. Yes. Hard stop next month. Don't do it anymore. Oh my. Yeah. So you have the individual saying rent. Yeah. Uh, this is what I need you to pay. Was there an expansion of needs? Like starts with rent, suddenly changes to I don't know medical bills is uh, the the cow yeah. needs to be inoculated. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So in the beginning there was in the beginning was okay there's rent but also you know we have to eat a little bit yeah yeah okay <laughs> just a little bit more to eat yes but i learned i th- that one i was able to say you know what i can only give this much yeah i'm yeah. not going to be able to be giving you your food every month you know i'm yes. going to do this part uh-huh and i'm going to do it for the next six months and then six months the pandemic is not over still don't have a job so another six months it's extended again, extended yes. again. Yeah. so it's not extended in other in terms of um like other expense lines but yeah. it's it's extended in time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like yes. it's really could have you been you thought this thing was time bound no. but it's actually not it's been what two years now okay mm. and what was the was there any feedback from from the individual when they realized that you're not gonna do this anymore it's a lot of guilt trip is it by calls or is it by a proxy like now is your grandma so is your mom uh, yeah <laughs> you know how it goes how is the guilt tripping <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know how it goes yeah. it goes from from them to your to to the older ones and you know my grandma is like oh i heard that um but now I, to be honest i think yeah. my, my grandmother is a very independent woman and she does not depend on anyone for anything right to the point where she said you know what mm-hmm. let them be outside if that's what it takes for them to get a job. So your grandma essentially went to shock therapy. She like did. we cannot extend this for it, too long. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Let's put the person in a situation where they have to rise up and they try to need. solve this exactly. uh, situation that they're in. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre. You're welcome. Um I think what you've actually done here is created a new idea, giving birth to something called financial therapy. Uh, perhaps something that we can delve into in, into further. I agree and and also like for a lot of people I know people don't speak about how much black tax impacts them. Yes. And I'll say it impacts your mental health more than your pocket cuz I'm okay with giving you that yes. m- amount. Yeah. I'm just not okay with it being extended for so long that I start our relationship starts to suffer. Yes, yes. And it's suffering and we're family so it's bothering me you know so now we're going to meet at a family meeting and i don't talk to you <laughs> oh my it gets complicated exactly, yeah so, so financial goes to emotional goes to social exactly so i think that's yeah it, it affects more your emotion than it does your pocket we had you loud and clear yeah thank you mia you're welcome thank, thank you, you for much. opening up and uh, do have a lovely lovely day thank you for having me on the podcast Cheers. as your first guest so you guys have just heard from Mia. I mean, that story was so raw, uh, really came from within her. And she touched upon some really interesting points about how just black tax doesn't necessarily affect your financial pocket, but actually your mental health and your relationship with your family members. But now we'd like to take one other example from David to really learn more about the, his experiences with black tax. So David, tell me, what's been your experience with black tax that you can remember the one key one? I say like my whole life is <laughs> all about blood tax yeah. basically being the first born in my family in a broken family and uh, brought brought up by grandparents okay mostly it started with my siblings interesting so, so not your parents but your siblings not my parents and then uh, it gets to the next level of I am done with school. I am done with uh you know being under parents who are now grandparents mm-hmm. and I've started working and I have to support the people who have brought me up who are my grandparents. Yeah. And then we get to the point that my parents are now getting elderly mm-hmm. and now I have to support both my parents and my grandparents and my wow. siblings and my family. So tell me, how many people are you supporting in total? We're talking about my dad, mom. I'm to- we're talking about four of my uh, uh, three siblings. Yeah, I have seven. S- yeah. yeah, those are seven. Yeah, I have my own family, of which course. is wife and kids. Uh, I have my grandparents, and uh, the auntie who received me in Nairobi. Yes, she passed on, so her kids wow. are my responsibility too. 
Wow. So basically, you're earning all this money. You're going to work every single day, nine to five, sometimes nine to eight. You're tired, yeah. but just to support other people. It starts out like uh, there's no one else. Mm. It's my responsibility. It's I'm happy to help because I'm the first one. I like there's no one else to do what I am able to do because they did their best mm -hmm. for me to get where I am. Over time, it starts becomes a begam, becoming a burden. It bears you down because you forget about yourself. Exactly. It wears you down because you cannot account. Most of the time, actually, doing budgets is 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 a burden on its own mm. for anything that you get into your pocket mm -hmm. you, like i won't do any budget you just tick off what i am about to do this month mm -hmm. and i push the rest to, to the next month or to the next paycheck or to the next side hustle that gives me money mm -hmm. because doing the budget alone you'll find i once did it and it was I was living way over my means I and mean. it was not lef reflecting on my own person. Yeah. It was like giving other people yeah. benefit. And and do you feel that this black tax sometimes leads you to looking for debt and borrowing from other people? Has that already started? Most of the people that that I have met who have the same experience as me or who I have shared with, mm -hmm. we are always in debt yeah. because... Uh, some things are uh, are inevitable like someone gets sick you have no money yeah they have sold most of the land like at home you are just remaining with the little that they live on they live on and yeah. so there is nothing more to sell so we have to get into debt to Just take care of necessary stuff and uh, they they don't stop coming yes someone yeah. is sick here someone got an accident there someone uh is going to school. Yeah. So debt is part of life. Life, yeah. Mm, interesting. And and you mentioned something earlier. You said because you're the firstborn, you feel that the burden falls on you. Do you feel now that some of your siblings have, you know, graduated, do you feel that they feel the obligation to also help out or do they very much still s come to you because you're the firstborn? Only one of them has graduated. Okay. Right now. Uh, the rest are not doing so well but we have tried to like make their lives stable mm -hmm. the one who has graduated is very responsible okay he helps out when he can but he has not uh, like i'm still the you're still the head yeah, of the house the head yeah. of the house so yeah uh in as much as he doesn't have a lot of money but he helps out when he can. When he can. Yeah, and, and I, I, I feel I've tried cushioning him. Mm -hmm. From the black tax. From the black tax, tax because he's young, he has not even started a family, he's graduated, but he has not gotten the job of his dreams. So he's just doing, you know, hustling here and there. Yeah. He's very good with what he does. But I've tried telling him, try as much as possible to make sure that your money goes into you not to everyone else because yeah. well yeah because you forget about yourself when yes. you've got black tax yeah. no and i think um <coughs> you know I, and i was just going to ask you uh, you're probably trying to protect your sibling from the black tax because you're not just not happy where you are with it and it do you think it takes a toll on your mental health a lot mm. Yeah. yeah, it's it's stressful. It yeah. makes you irritable sometimes. It takes a toll on your relationship with people. Sometimes get to a point where you cannot like be at peace with everyone. Like mm. changes your personality to some extent. Yeah, and that's yeah, deep. And yeah, stress, depression is not very far away from your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think um, there are some certain things that um, Dovu is trying to put in place to help people deal with black tax. One of the key things that drives you to do a lot of charity work and forget that charity begins at home is because you feel this obligation and this emotional burden of wanting to help your family members. And yeah. this is so common across the, the African culture. I think it seeps into some Indian cultures as well. We have this thing where you know the firstborn like yourself must look after the parents 
And Indeed. if only we had the education to pay for NHIF, like you mentioned, there's people falling ill. It's 500 shillings a month, which I know for some people is a lot of money, but it saves you so much more money when you're um, actually ill. Um, and it's those things that we're working on today. And so tell me, David, are, do you feel that the rest of your family is also evolving out of it, becoming more responsible, or do you foresee this to be a long-term challenge for yourself? Personally, I would say that uh, for me, it's not ending because yeah. parents are not growing any younger. About the siblings, what we've been trying to do, what I have been trying to do is to make them empowered, like to for them to realize the power of education yeah. which is what brought, took me to like to where i am to a position of being able to help like making sure that they once they start earning it is their money and they will be able to benefit from it okay uh, as far as parents are concerned uh for me i'm stuck with them we have no choice because they are growing old they are, we are still we are still uh their children yes. and it's in, in the culture and we already started the siblings we can empower them. we can empower them yeah. yeah and i think you're making first of all the right steps by the way uh, some of the teachings that we find go a Get up, go more about don't give them money but teach them a new skill set uh, you know sit down with them to create a business plan so you ask them what are you passionate about and they'll say oh I am very good so if it's a younger sibling they'll be like I'm really good with the internet okay what business can you start on the internet and then using what you've learnt and spending your time rather than money you create a business plan to empower them to actually become it financially independent and I think this is um, if you continue listening to the podcast you'll definitely get more tips on how do we do other things other than give them money to make sure they become their own independent flower and eventually help you support your parents because ultimately they're also their parents. True. Yeah. So David, this is part of our financial therapy. So do you roughly know how much you've spent to date on black tax? Just a rough figure. In total? Yes. Since I started out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Several million. Okay. So let's say five million plus. Well, almost five almost million. Money, yeah, it's a lot of money. It's you know it is. that five million could be life changing. Um, and let's just say, let's forget about this black tax and your responsibilities and obligations. What would you do with this amount of money if you had the opportunity oh to? Oh my goodness, we. I would not be employed anymore. I would start my like I would reinvigorate my business. I would. Oh my. A lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I um, thought about it that way. Yeah, a lot of this is a lot of burden, and it has an impact on your mental health. Um, how do you, when there's moments of, you know, you said you were irritable sometimes. How do you learn to cope with it? Do you have any mechanisms that you? I heard as part of depression at some point. It was bad. Yes. I've never spoken about it to anyone, but uh, let me say I, I became too much at some point you know all the pressure and everything and everything and I lost my mind yeah. and uh, without going into details I lost two weeks of my life I didn't know what was happening to me mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear and I got into the hospital and was there for I think a month or so and I got counseling and I got counseling after that okay. and uh, it's like three four years now okay Part of that, actually, I actually thank my therapist because we 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 got to the point that I knew that I I should be able to teach myself to say no to things which are not directly related to me or some things that I did not deem as important as I should be able to fund them. Yeah, of course. And uh, it's been possible like yeah. I've grown now you l slowly to say gotten no. used to saying no to some things mm -hmm. limiting the amount of help that I can yeah. that is why right now I am in a good mental state to be able to tell my brother yes it's it's not your rep responsibility yeah so uh, in case anyone comes to you refer to me first, first yeah yeah so, so actually, uh, you've touched on a very... So first of all, congratulations. The fact that you've brought yourself out of the dark place is a step in the right direction. Um, and I think keep at it. These things in life, I, I always say, 
we'll deal with it another day, but don't let it ex uh, affect your mental health. And yeah. it's easier said than done, but I think you're doing a great job. Um, one of the key things that we find is that black tax isn't going to go away, but how do we manage it, right? So what can we do to make sure that it doesn't creep onto our personal life where we feel these moments of stress and, you know, um, hardship? And the way I see that is, ultimately, our emotions play the, take the better of us. So we don't want to feel guilty. We don't want that feeling of guilt. So the best way to manage it is say, okay, if I earn 100,000 shillings every single month, I'm willing to create a black tax fund where I put 5% of that in there. So that's 5,000 shillings. So during that month, I know, okay, my mama needs 2,000 shillings. My mama and baba need 2,000 shillings. I have 3,000 shillings for everybody else. And that way, they all come. Somebody will say, I want 1,000, 200, 800. But as soon as you hit the 5,000 shilling limit, you can now comfortably say without feeling guilty, for this month, guys, I'm done. I cannot give you any more money. And the reason you have to create this fund is so that A, you can conquer the feeling of guilt, but also you're now saving for yourself. You're now investing for your family and your children. So that's a technique we've seen work really well with um, other individuals uh, who we've come across it. And I actually know some people who've moved country. They've, they migrated to the States because black tax was getting too much. You know, just because they've done well and they've left the village and they're being successful, they're now being punished or taxed is the perfect word for it. Um, so th I think that can be a small implementation that you could try. I mean, you're already doing it because now you said you have a limit, so well done. Um, but it's definitely something I think people can draw upon who are also experiencing black tax. And we all know we know someone who is going through this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I didn't know actually about the fund. Yes. And it's a good, it's it's a a good, good thing. One. It's a good thing. Yeah, and, and let me just take it one step further. Say that month you have 5,000 shillings, but there's 2,000 left. Wonderful. It rolls over into the next month, so now you have 7,000. Now, if somebody gets ill and we need like 5,000 of it, you still have 2,000 for your mama and baba because you've got it. Um, so, yeah, that's how that fund should work, and it's just a small... And this way, if anyone ever says to you, I need more money, you have to be strict and disciplined to say, sorry, I've done my ta black tax quota for the month. But no, David, thank you so much for your time and being so transparent and open. We really appreciate it. It's really deep and hopefully you can take away some of the key things to help you get out of this particular challenge at this stage. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks, David. Wow. Wow is an understatement. I, yeah, I'm lost for words. Honestly, I'm actually a bit paused. Black tax and its impact in society you know when you when you think about it when we initially started this particular episode i was just ranting to you about how much i had spent but then to listening to to our two guests you actually sit back and think wait 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 there's an emotional toll to this all right there's stuff that i've not been sharing that exists you, you it's dragging down on your mental health there's a challenge around society, like you mentioned. Yeah. You, you don't want to see that relative, right? You're even scared that you'll meet them and they'll want something else because now you're in person. Wow. Honestly, I know we knew this was a problem, but just speaking to two people, we yeah. haven't even gone far. It's actually a much bigger problem than I thought. Yeah. And what, I'd, what I would like out of this episode is really give everybody out there dealing with black tax in any shape or form to really learn how they can tackle with these things. I already touched about a black tax fund. Yeah. I think that really plays upon your emotional feeling of guilt because if you do that and you set aside a small amount every single month and you commit to yourself and you're strict with yourself, yeah. you don't have that emotional guilt anymore because you're saying, I have done the amount of charity I can do for this month okay. and I'm not going to lose sleep nights over it sleep i'm not gonna lose sleep, sleep over it yes yeah i'm not yeah. gonna lose sleep over it i've done my bit and you know i'm contributing to my community and i'm not leaving anything on the table because i am contributing yeah so there's other ways as well you can really help with um trying to help individuals so one of the key things is a lot of the cases of black tax is that somebody's fallen ill okay uh, yes to solve for that yes. there's two things you can do a, you can pay for your national insurance, uh, which I mentioned briefly. It's only 500 shillings, but you know a medical bill is normally 150K. Yeah. You know, recently I had to undergo something. I have health insurance, but I was shocked at the amount because it was unexpected. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. Yes. 
So it covers for that. And actually, a couple of the people we've spoken to have said that it actually, uh, the national insurance actually even covers for you when you're um, pregnant. And it covers all, all your the maternity, maternity cover, yes. cover which yeah. I think is great. And in, in short term, instead of going and buying two drinks for 500 shillings, why don't you just pay for your national insurance? Whether you can afford an even better insurance, why don't you just pay for it because it's a fallback? Just have a baseline at, at the very least. At the very least. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Um, and, you know, you could do that for your relatives that are dependent on you. This way it stops them all the time asking you for money to help with health insurance. Okay. Um, so, you know, that uh, money that you set aside on a monthly basis, let's say if it's just 5,000 shillings and you have supporting four people, that 2,000 can actually support for healthcare, which is one less burden for you to worry about. Right, Because yes. I feel like health is the most... Um, the strongest emotional trigger. And the second thing, of course, is to get a well affordable insurance plan. Uh, nowadays, there's different types of brands out there. Um, I can mention a few like Emma Tiba is really good. Yeah. Um, you know, there's other plans there that are reasonably affordable that you can get to help. Right. Yeah. So that takes off significant stress. So instead of just giving them money for healthcare, next time say no, yes, I'll help you today. But from next month, we're going to do X, Y, Z in yes. order to make sure this doesn't happen again. Right. So you flip it around because we think about it. If if you can put aside, say, the 500, then there's a medical bill down the line, which is 500,000 bob. Exactly. It's actually been sorted by that. So instead of paying 500,000, you actually just paid 500. Yes, yeah. there's a relief. There's a You've relief. just been smart with how you, exactly. you d d deploy the money. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And another thing is like like Mia mentioned, right? She said that, you know, okay, initially it was a short term problem. She was giving five thousand, five thousand, five thousand. Yeah. One way she could have tackled that to said, Listen, I'm giving you a heads up, I'm being very clear with you, setting clear goals, saying, I'm gonna help you with it for another two months, which she did. Yes. But in addition of that, she should say, Right, we're gonna dig through what is your skill set? I agree you don't have a job today. And yes, the job market is hard. Yeah. But the internet has made it so easy for people nowadays to start businesses online, whether it's a high side hustle. So what are you passionate about? Yo, you're passionate about eggs? Okay. Great. Why don't you get a few chicken, breed a few eggs and sell eggs? I right. know it's a very simple example, but you can do anything. If you're a little bit more uh, better with tech, you can start managing social media accounts. All you need to do is to get the courage to go knock on the door and ask someone. But perhaps this individual doesn't have that knowledge, okay. but you can give your time in helping them you know, connect them to a friend that might need that service and okay. they start off and they're generating a little bit more income, uh, you know, support them with how do they do business? How do they create a financial plan? Yes. Things like this that are intangible can really make an impact long term. And if you help this individual once, who's to say they might go teach the same skills to someone else? So what you're doing is you're providing them with a skill set that makes them financially independent okay. rather than just handing out money where they're financially dependent. That exists, I mean, across society, across different cultures. Uh, to all our listeners, uh, we'll be glad to hear about your own Black Tax story. Uh, you can reach out to us, blacktax at ndovu.co. We will try to give you a financial therapy session uh, to, over to help you overcome your own Black Tax issues and give you the power to actually say no. Please reach out to us. We do look forward to hearing from you. And boy, today was was tough hey. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all thank you uh we are signing out from another episode of the elephant in the room as always i'm your host ron and gary chief thinker and and i'm, and I'm radical about you the super striker and we are out and we are out indeed